Next is this great point, which is checkpoint. By the way, what is the checkpoint? Anyone, if somebody wants to take this initiative to answer this question, what is the checkpoint? So, I don't know, it's the consistent state of any database. Uh, sorry, Kamal, I didn't get you. It's Pankaj here. Um, I don't sorry, know. yeah, Pankaj. So checkpoint, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a consist consistent state of any database. Okay, that's a good one, right. Uh, that is actually related to database, but I try to always go out of database. So let us look at an example that is completely out of the database. Okay, I'm just thinking which example would be good. Okay, we'll, we'll consider a highway, right? Okay, I don't know if this really looks like a highway. On, on a highway when we go, um, at least in India, I don't know about other countries. Um, okay, we have uh, toll booths, right? So these toll booths, let's say, uh, if a car is crossing this uh, toll, or, or what do we call exactly? I don't know in other countries. This is a toll gate. Over here, we we pay some money uh, to the uh, to these people in order to cross this one. This money we are paying just because for the maintenance of the roads. Okay. So let let's assume we have two three toll booths or uh, toll barriers on the highway. This is your journey. This is like you start from here. Uh, this is your start. And this is your end, end of the journey. Now, assume that uh, one car has crossed the first toll. I'll just mention it 1T, 2T, and 3T. So if it, if it has crossed the first toll booth, then it simply means that the user or, or the guy has covered this distance on the highway. It's pretty obvious, right? If the guy has already taken the ticket over here, then we can say that from the start till this point, the user or the car has cleared. Now we did not get any update for a long time. Suddenly we see that the car passes the second toll. So we can happily say that the car has moved forward this much in time. Okay. So we can, we can actually say that, okay, from the start point, current state of the car is over here. We are not sure about uh, in between where the car stops or what happens to the car. We are just bothered about the stages. Now the car passes the third toll booth. So we can clearly say that car has at least moved this distance from the start point. And again at the end, we'll, uh, I'll talk about end later. <laughs> So at this stage, this is generally uh, what happens with your transactions. When you start a transaction, that is uh, nothing but, um, <clears throat> how do I say? You have checkpoint one or the first checkpoint. So let's take the checkpoint one number is 1001. Then you move forward in time or, or the transactions are being executed in the database. Then you say that checkpoint two, and that might be 1002. This actually guarantees, when we talk about checkpoints, this guarantees that this much transaction has been successfully implemented in the database. This actually helps the database to identify or to actually maintain the consistency over the transactions that have been completed or over the amount of work that has been done. This would be CP4. Okay. And then once the transaction ends, this is not nothing but okay. Let us assume we are committing the transaction. Okay. This will be again another checkpoint on the commit where okay. I'm not talking about SCN. SCN is a separate case. So this is one great example to relate highway tolls with the checkpoints inside the database. So in general terms, what is a checkpoint? Checkpoint is the measure of the amount of work done inside the database. Okay, once again, checkpoint is the mechanism or the way to actually measure or put a check on the amount of transaction that has been completed. Now, SCN is again a different story. Let's not get into SCN. Golden Gate checkpoints. Now, do you think Golden Gate should have checkpoints? Uh, let us talk logically. We don't need to actually look at the slide. Uh, do we think like there should be a checkpoint in Golden Gate? Uh, yes. How? 
I am taking a, a very vague scenario just to relate it to what I am trying to say you guys. This is my database redo. In redo transactions are being written. Okay, but this was the last committed transaction. We are having transactions, but these are not committed. Okay, and then your extract process. The job of extra extract process is what? To observe, to just read from the redo and get the committed transactions. Okay, so we are assuming this committed transaction is written onto the, sorry, source trail. Yes, who is it? Uh, here, here in this is Suman. Yes, Suman, tell me. Uh, it is not guaranteed that uh, if you commit the transaction, it's not go, it, there is no need to go to redo, right? Sometimes uh, it may re resides in uh, buffer cache also until some particular time. Now and that so is the golden gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, tell me. So the golden gate waits until it, it uh, through to redo log. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, <laughs> that will be answered in the next slide where we have integrated capture versus classic capture. So uh, that is something like completely out of the scenario. Um, don't worry, it will be answered in the next slide. Any which was, uh, okay. I don't think we'll be looking at it right now. But if you take my personal opinion, what is the percentage that your transaction will be in memory? It is very less. How? Because yeah. when the uh, when redo log, uh, sorry, log writer writes data to redo log, it is like whenever the redo log is one third full or 50 MB is used or your yeah, checkpoint occurs, right? Yes. These yes. are the or, or user commits or whatever it is. So this percentage would be in point somewhere point zero. So I, I think we, we are not going to talk about all this, but yes, maybe I'll, I'll explain you when we are in performance tuning and also in the next slide, uh, you will get the 50% answer to that. Okay, thanks. Okay, let's come back to the topic. This transaction was committed. Okay, committed extract, I'll, I'll name this transaction or I'm naming the com committed point as one. Okay, so uh, the extract will write this onto the source trail, correct? This is very simple, but Extract is an observer. It is still observing the redo log to see the next committed transaction. We are assuming over here the user issued a commit. Okay, this is where what uh, extract will do is it will use a checkpoint mechanism. It will assign a number to every committed transaction. Let's take it is saying that it has created a checkpoint number as uh, one, two, three for the first committed transaction. Now, while it was observing for the next committed transaction, suddenly it got a commit. Then what it will do is it will give it a number one, two, four, and it will write it onto the source trail. So this checkpoint actually guarantees that this much work is done on the redo, right? It makes sense, correct? So again, uh, relating it to the highway concept, when if extract is having the checkpoint as one to three, it says that this much work is done. If it is one to four, then this much work is done. Again, after some time, if there is another commit, this uh, it will issue a checkpoint as one to five. So this way it helps the extract process to not to extract the data from redo multiple times. So these checkpoints will help the extract the same way. The same concept is used by all the processes. Uh, I, I don't know in one of the interviews one guy was saying only checkpoint is uh, related to extract process, but every process uses it. So how now you have data pump process data pump will start delivering the transactions. So it has delivered the first transaction onto the target site. It will generate a checkpoint 1001. That means this this much work is done. This much data has been transferred onto the other site. And when it is transferring the second or the uh, next transaction on the trans, uh, I mean target side, it will generate another checkpoint saying that, okay, this much work is done. So that way it helps the data pump to not to send 
data multiple times over the network checkpoints actually define this much work has been done and it, it actually guarantees that that much work has been done properly the way it has to be done so checkpoint will only be issued when the a transfer was done it was collected by the collector process now if there is a problem with the collector writing in the source trail that is not the problem of data pump the job of the data pump is to read and push the data also it has to be collected by the collector process if it is done it will issue a checkpoint that guarantees that this much work has been done Again, collector will have its own checkpoints for the amount of data it has collected and the ones which has been written to source trail, uh, sorry, target trail. From the target trail, again, replicat will have its own checkpoints, uh, maybe 111, 112, 113. And those checkpoints will guarantee that, I mean, that amount of data is written onto the target server. Okay, too much of concepts but actually i have a great link about checkpoints which i will send as a part of must read email so make sure you are reading that email okay about the checkpoints so now i mean i don't think we need to actually go through this slide because we got the real concept okay uh, any which ways while we are administering uh, i'll try to show you guys about checkpoints but not really in the initial lessons until you guys get some stuff until you guys actually what do you call try to configure golden gate and later on when we are getting more into the details then you will understand about it do we have to configure checkpoints for every process no why will we configure that is an internal mechanism do we need to the transaction okay like how we don't configure checkpoints in database or scn number in the database that is automatic right it is uh, like the internal of the golden gate to make sure okay that much work has been done right guys so that's about the golden gate architecture i mentioned earlier please 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 go through this video at least four or five times get your so any sync between checkpoints among the different levels of processes any time intervals between checkpoints i'm not sure about the time intervals between the checkpoint process why because uh, checkpoints are generated uh, I mean after the amount of work is done. It is not based on the time in which it has to be done Okay, it is like amount of work. So if one guy is doing some work in one minute uh, So you can tell that checkpoints occurs at every one minute, but the same work is done by another another guy in more time Then for him the checkpoint time intervals will be different. So there's no time. It is not time interval bound It is bounded by the amount of work so if 10% is done, okay, example, let's take a contract, right? Uh, so we get into a contract uh, of a building. So what I say is initially you will have to pay me 10% and after every 10% of the completion of the uh, project, you need to issue the money. So this, uh, this becomes your checkpoints. Now, how much time does the builder takes to build the uh, building or between the percentage of uh, amount or between the release of the amount that's uh, irrespective so it's like based on the amount of work i mean honestly i i did not get this much into checkpoints so any sync between checkpoints among the different levels not really uh, every process has its own checkpoints just to make sure it has done the amount of work Mm, I think logically I'm correct. Excellent presentation. Okay. Thank you. No one can beat you. Oh, okay guys I mean, let's not have these kind of things in the chat. If you have any personal appreciations, please send it in, e in an email <laughs> Okay. Yeah, who's it? Hey, Arun, this is Pankaj Shriya. Yeah, Pankaj, you might tell me. Arun, so, uh, first time, sorry, I'm repeating my question But mm -hmm. last time I asked question about uh, heterogeneous replication. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question was a bit different So I understand that uh, you know, uh, if we have source or target Oracle, so we can perform GG. Mm -hmm. My question was that uh, if Oracle is nowhere, either source or target, mm -hmm. if source is SQL Server and target is uh, MySQL, uh, so MySQL or some other uh, RDBMS, mm -hmm. then can we also use GG, although it's a uh, Oracle product? Okay, you need to understand this. Uh, this product was not Oracle product; it is acquired product. Okay. 
if okay. you if you understand the first thing so over there if you remember this product was created for the enscribe database not even for oracle so this okay. this product was created for enscribe to enscribe replication initially and then it has continued to add multiple database vendors so i think mm, that answers your question it is not an oracle product it is acquired by oracle so if it is acquired okay. by oracle that means it is not developed by oracle if oracle is developing i know oracle is obsessed with its own products and it yeah. will, it will always uh, um, be oracle product centric so but this is not okay thanks sir no problem yeah. mm, does gg support no sql db mm, i think i i did not uh, hear about this one uh, maybe you need to check the certification matrix i think it does not support as far as i know no it does not i have never heard of uh, golden gate on no sql it it does support timestamp i think the ones which we have seen earlier those are the ones uh, those are supported maybe in the upcoming releases they might think of adding it okay 